What's going on guys? This is Michael Gascon with Gascon Horsemanship and I'm coming to you today to work on some Liberty and we are going to be working on Tarzan. My wife's an extreme Mustang makeover horse and I have taken over his progress since my wife is in full. So I'm going to be looking to get his Liberty up and working. I've shown you a couple videos and just like everything that we do, we're dead set about our end result and what we get out of the horse, but we're flexible about our approach. So I've shown you some other videos of how I like to start the process and I like to do it without a halter from the very beginning. Just like everything, there's some horses that's gonna work on, some horses it's not gonna work on. It works really good on those real hot sensitive horses like the Passos and Arabians that I'm used to working with. But Tarzan, he had a little stranger danger going on whenever I started working with him. He said, you're not Kelsey, what am I? I'm not gonna come to you. And he wasn't really hot enough for me to pressure him and make him look my way. No big deal, if you have a horse that's kinda dull, that, that's kind of a little lackluster and you're trying to do liberty, that's no problem as well. We're just gonna start this process with a halter. Um, I got this uh, programming method from Kat Zimmerman, the Mustang trainer, and she really helped me along with these dull, quiet, lazy horses uh, because I was so opposed to the hot, wiry horses that I could just pressure a little bit and they wanna face up. So first and foremost, I have a couple cookies in my pocket for my positive reinforcement and I have a couple whips to guide him. I like a Liberty Whip. This one here is gonna be four foot long with a foot long lash. And this one here is gonna be a five footer with a six foot lash. And what I'm gonna do is before I do anything is make sure my horse is okay. And this is probably session number three on him, but it just came to mind to start making these videos for you guys on him so you can see his progress from where he's at to where he's going. So he just got to the place where he's okay with the uh, with the whips being moved around him. He still might bother on his back legs some. If he does, no big deal. I just want to touch him, wave him around. If, you, if your horse isn't comfortable with the whips around him, you're not gonna be able to steer them with the whips. So first and foremost, whether you're using a halter to start or you're not using a halter, in both programs, you're looking to get those horses where they're okay with the whip being moved around them so that you can guide them. Now, when I start moving this horse off, I'm gonna start creating a funnel and I want you to think anytime that my whips are outward that I'm calling for him to come to me and they're going to guide him. When my whips go up like this, this is going to tell him to stop. And if he keeps walking forward, I'm going to use this as the very same way we would use a natural horsemanship halter if he didn't want to stop. We would put our pressure with the handles here. Nope, stop. So then whenever we call him outward like this, we would click to him. If he wants to step in, we would really like him on our outside shoulder. I don't want him cutting my circles off because that means he's walking less ground than I am and I don't want to be lunging him. I, want, I don't want him to be lunging me. I want to be lunging him. And as we go faster and faster, I want him outside of my circle so I'm doing less work than him. So hopefully by the time that you're doing liberty on your horse, your horse already leads. The reason that that's important to me is because I want them to already respect your bubble. I really don't believe in doing too much liberty uh, before your horse respects your personal space because I don't want to start calling these horses to come into my space before they already respect my bubble. Notice whenever I change directions, everything is backwards right now. When I change directions, I show him a whip, I bump his, his ribs until he steps over, I give him the freedom with this whip to move outward, move him out, there we go, just like that. Notice how I'm constantly going backwards, my body's real relaxed. The two big words that you need to remember in Liberty is draw and push. In the beginning stages like this, where he's just basically following me around, basically we're just leading backwards. Um, but I'm at the end of the rope. Ho. Oh. Basically I'm just leading him. The horse already knows how to lead. Your horses at home already know how to lead. So they already should have the idea that when this rope gets tight to come forward. What you're doing with the whips is showing him that you can pressure him and click to him for the first time and whip, pop the whip behind him to bring him towards you. And that's really the ideology that's changing right now. And that's what we want the horse to understand. Hey, I can look at you and click to you and that means come to me. Of course, everything in horsemanship we do is away from us, away from us, away from us. So now this is a big game changer for when the first time we start asking him is to come to us. And that's really what our halter's for. Is to, if he gets to the end of the line, it's just like a safety blanket, really. Now, Liberty is gonna be great, especially when you're starting. For those glutes and hammies, your gluteus maximus is gonna look luxurious. 
back when we were doing the, the Never Give Up Tour and I was prepping six and seven horses uh, to do Liberty, I'm telling you, really filled, filled out a pair of jeans a lot better. All this backpedaling. All this backpedaling is draw. All this backpedaling makes the horse want to come to us. And when he thinks about boogering off, don't shut down with him. That was the hardest thing for me to do was when that horse would be walking my direction, especially with no halter, and he would kind of bobble step, it would make me bobble step. And then, of course, he would booger off and run around the arena or around the round pen. I want you to just keep everything real fluid, real nice. Oh. I want you to keep all your motion fluid and nice. Even if he boogers off, that's another opportunity to bring him back. But you want to keep things smooth and easy so that you're not making any herky-jerky motions like that. Because if you do, that's going to set your horse off. And the second this halter's off, he's going to be gone. So get in the habit of everything being smooth. The more turns, the more twists, the more he figures out to bring the face to us and keep the butt away from us, all of these things are gonna help with that draw. The next thing that I want you to be able to do is just like I just did there is ask him to back up. So I wanna be able to back, start bringing those whips under his chest. Ho. Oh. Because now the, the next step is I wanna be able to stand him in one place and start getting a stride away from him and him know the difference when my whips are straight up versus when they're to the side. Now, obviously, I can't go much further than this lead rope because I don't want to put pressure on the lead rope. Good boy. Ho. Oh. That's a good boy. That's what we're looking for right there. So he's already, you know, where, where this is session number three. And basically, session number one was just desensitizing with the whips. Session number two was a lot of backwards, walking backwards, walking backwards, him figuring that out. And then at the end of session two, I started showing him that this meant back up. And it was a little sketchy for him because my wife has already showed him how to rear. So it was, I had to be persistent that rearing is not what I wanted so that he would just back up off of that. Good boy. Whenever you make those sharp turns, pick the outside whip up so they know to keep their face away from it. You see how he's turning here? Touch his butt, touch his butt, touch his butt. There we go. And ho. All right, guys, so we're going to take the rope off of him. Again, it's very early on, so he could booger off. He could run around this round pin. No big deal. If he does, watch my body language and watch how quiet I'm going to stay. Because you getting all excited about it, it's not going to help anything. Good boy. He tries to get to the inside of my bubble. I touch him on the ribs here and push him outward. Very nice. We're gonna turn the opposite direction. If you feel like his face is too close to yours, bring the handles of your whips closer together. So like right there. Notice he thought about boogering off and going the other direction and I kept going backwards. That's a hard thing to figure out, but it's so helpful once you do figure it out. Oh, now I'm gonna give him a cookie for trying. Good boy, good boy. So this is really speeding up. I just took over for, for my wife when she, she got too heavy and full to, to ride the horses. So again, he had like stranger danger and Mustangs are a real, it's a real thing uh, with the undomesticated horses that they've only had one handler. So this Liberty really helped us get our bond quicker, uh, get to the point where he's not worried about me. He's okay, you're cool, you give me cookies. Ho. Oh. So now I'm going to start seeing how far I can. Ho, ho, ho. So you see where that starts? Literally four feet out, five feet out. I want to get where I can call him into an arena. I have an idea for a comedy sketch. And I want to do ride in on a bumpy horse and he'll play the part of the bumpy horse. And the whole skit is going to be about how bad my butt hurts and how much preparation H I'm using and how long the ride has been. And then I'm going to call Fanny in, my Pasofino, to the, the middle of the ring. And I'm going to jump off of his back and jump onto the Paso. And when he gates around all smooth, it's going to be like an infomercial about how nice my keister feels. So smooth. It just glides easy on the back side. But before I can do all that, I need him to really polish up his liberty. So he'll go wherever I ask him to go. And 
the same way I just called him from four feet away, I'm going to call him from the whole arena away. Ho. Back. Ho. Good boy. Good boy. Another thing that I want to do is I want them to, to be able to walk with me whenever I turn my back to them. As odd as that sounds, a lot of times that doesn't translate. Now you have whips in your hand, they don't see your face and they want to booger off. So I want to be able to turn towards them, just like so. And I want to be able to turn my back to them. The key to this is keeping that motion, keeping that draw going. So whenever I face them, look how my feet never stop. And look when I turn away from him, how my feet never stop. And I keep my whips on the inside because, again, I want him walking further than I do, not less than I do. Oh, good boy. All right, guys. Well, we're going to keep you updated and we're going to keep you posted on how his progress goes. So you can see from the very beginning of his liberty all the way to the end until he's in a performance. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.